Despite the Minister of Basic Education, Andrew Mucheka's announcement that grades R6 and 11 would return to school on the 6th of July, the Eastern Cape Education Department said that there were many factors to consider. Now, the department announced new dates for pupils to return and issued instructions on allowing school to start again. It comes after more than 200 confirmed positive cases amongst pupils and teachers at a single school in the province were recorded. Basic Education Director General Matanzima Mweli previously told Newsroom Africa that Eastern Cape learners in grades R, 6 and 11 would only return to class at the end of July. Now he said the delay return to school was at the request of the Eastern Cape Education Department. There's no bad tricky. I mean, all MECs were interviewed uh, at a media briefing yesterday. And was, that's what the MEC of the Eastern Cape announced. And uh, that was not the first time they've written a letter to the minister. The premier has communicated with the minister. Um, the matter was discussed at the Council of Education Ministers on the 2nd of uh, July. And uh, that intention of the, of the Eastern Cape and all other provinces on how they are going to be phasing in grades was extensively discussed and was agreed upon and that's part of the flexibility of the plan predicated on the risk-adjusted differentiated approach in phasing in grades. So do we know when those pupils, the grade R6 and 11 pupils, will be allowed to get back to class specifically in the Eastern Cape? Yes, we do. Uh, the deadline is that by the end of July, they should be back to school. All right, now spokesperson for the Eastern Cape Education MEC, Vuiseka Mbotlela, gives us more details about the plans ahead. A very good morning to you, MEC. Thank you very much for joining us. I mean, let's just looking at the announcement, that of course, came with a particular focus on the Eastern Cape, that grades 3, 6 and 11, as well as special needs, will, will only be going back ultimately on the 20th of July. Walk us through what mechanisms and plans have been put in place to accommodate the learners during these unprecedented times. Uh, morning to you and, uh, and in News Africa and also the viewers. Um, firstly, I, ma I must make this indication that indeed, as you have uh, made an indication that uh, the national DG has made that indication that it's taking to return to classes the second cohort on the 20th of June. Um, it's, a, it's a decision that was taken not just by the sector of education in the province, but by provincial government after considering many factors in terms of opening schools, because you understand that currently the entire globe is faced with the pandemic and uh, each and every discussion and the decision that gets to be taken one uh, by one sector uh, it needs to be looked at how is it going to affect the other uh, in the context of our own situation as a province is that uh, we've we've been in the past uh, few weeks experiencing high rate of infection in the province uh, which uh, it also claimed the 15 uh, lives of our own uh, uh, teachers uh, and, and, and three learners uh, in the province. Now, the decision to then uh, put a hold in the, in the second cohort was based on the fact that when you look at the pace of that virus, it therefore means that you needed to, to, to be a bit tactical because it has also been uh, made as an indication uh, also in the public that there is a bit of a workload that is taking place in the side of the Department of Health. And then, therefore, the decision to then return the second grade at this point in time, which is a bit windy, which is a bit cold, which is a bit raining, uh, it will be a, a bit of a non calculated decision. Hence, therefore, the MEC had to take that decision, which was well canvassed in structures of the province and also in the, in the, in the PDCO of the province, to say uh, there must be a request that is submitted to the minister to consider the conditions of the Eastern Cape and to consider the issues that have been raised. But mainly, it's not on the fact that perhaps the department wouldn't be able to deliver curriculum and PPEs, because uh, I can confirm but that by the time
time our own learners come back to the classes on the 20th of July as expected, uh, the issue of PPEs would no longer be a, a point to discuss. The issue of water provision will no longer be a point to discuss. The issue of, uh, of, of, of sanitation in the, in the schools that were identified as a bit of a crisis will no longer be a discussion. So the issue of us not coming back to school as a province was merely based on the fact that whatever that we take as a decision in the sector of education, we must look at how is it going to affect the provincial government in general. So that is the, the that was the road that was traversed by the province in taking that decision after it had made a request to the national minister and also made a reporting in the in the CM. You can hear me. I just want to also touch on the various scenarios that, of course, uh, you know, is highlighted within the Eastern Cape. You mentioned that these mechanisms have been put in place to ensure that um, we, we, we mitigate against some of the challenges that the, the province is facing during these unprecedented times. Looking at the um, private sector, the private schooling and the public schooling, I wanted to know from you, what is the status of the reopening of the rest of the grades? Ultimately, how is this going to impact their curriculum and uh, the rest of the academic uh, year for them? Uh, um, I, you know, the, the, the reality of the matter is that the most critical grades in the, in the, in the basic education, if, 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 if I may put it that way, is the grade 12, because grade 12 is marked and, 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 and assessed in, in terms of the country standards. And also, uh, um, the grade 12 is an exit grade between uh, the basic education and the higher education. But in terms of all other grades, it's, some, it's, a, it's an assessment that is internal, which therefore means that uh, you would then develop uh, as a province a standard mechanism to make sure that be it a learner is in a private school or a public school, that learner will be uh, assessed in the same standards because the only custodian of the of the of the education and the and, and, and the examination process is the department. So uh, such things are, 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 are being discussed in the in the in the department. But I can also tell you that you know. Uh, if you look at the Eastern Cape, uh, its own teachers are of a special kind because uh, even though that they, they will have three uh, to, 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 to four weeks that they would have lost in terms of grade uh, 11, grade uh, 6, and all other grades, uh, teachers of the Eastern Cape are capable of delivering the left curriculum in the left uh, hours. I uh, mean, in the left a uh, month, and with the, with the with the type of skills that they always pro provide, of uh, even coming up with different camps, and also trying to have uh, Saturday classes and in evening classes, we're confident that the curriculum of all the other grades that is being left, uh, they are going to be able to handle. And we, 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 we can confirm that there is a plan that is already being canvassed to unions and also all the, uh, the stakeholders of the department to make sure that by the time at uh, the second cohort there is a plan and also uh, the schools themselves, uh, SMTs and the principals, have been given an opportunity to say what is it that they think uh, can best work in delivering the, the curriculum in the short space of time so that there is no gap that is, is, is going to be experienced between the private uh, independent schools and the public uh, uh, schools because, as you have already made an indication, there are uh, private independent schools that have made a request uh, to the department that they are ready Willie Seka, I just want to interrupt you there. I mean, I, I understand that you, you're saying that there is a plan in place and obviously that plan is, is being discussed and the best possible scenario is obviously going to be implemented in due course. But I, I want to look at the uh, issue of the digital divide in particular, um, mentioning the access to education and the quality of education, um, you know, is, is ultimately going to affect the learner's performance for the rest of the academic year. We've also seeing that uh, having to catch up with, um, with, the, with the curriculum or maintain the curriculum has been already stipulated throughout the year. And then there's also those who, who don't have access to data, who, um, you know, uh, families live below the poverty line and uh, will not have transport to go to school, etc. I, I just want to know what the department's plans are in terms of mitigating against those factors for the rest of the academic year within the Eastern Cape province. 
there is a, a, a ICT rollout that is being uh, rolled in the province, and that ICT rollout is made to mitigate the gap between uh, the time that has been lost and also make sure that uh, learners are able to study anytime, anywhere. And secondly, you will understand that we do have a scholar transport as the government within uh, learners that are from a far distance to the school they are given. So uh, for now, the issue of uh, delivering the curriculum for the second cohort, in terms of the friends of the department, we're bit confident that it is going to be met, and also the assessment will be done in not uh, degrading the standards, so that by the time grade 11 and all other grades come to grade 12, they do meet the standard requirements academically, uh, and also they are able to get the same content as any other kid in the, in the, in the, in the entire country. All right, uh, Wiseka, let's just also look at the issue of the social and relief grants that have been issued. I mean, many have come up to say that it's not enough uh, to support the, the families, um, but obviously this is just to help cushion the blow. Um, the students who received meals and also, um, you know, support in that, in that regard, oftentimes going to school was the only means of them um, getting a full meal for the day. Um, during the winter season and also during the COVID-19 pandemic, as these grades are phased in, ultimately, what is the department's plans with uh, addressing that issue? Um, obviously, we do understand that nutrition has a vital impact on, on one's learning capabilities. Uh, in the, in the, uh, towards the end of the month uh, of June, uh, the superintendent of the department issued an instruction note to all schools that uh, they must begin uh, uh, the, the process of feeding learners of other grades that have not yet came back because uh, that was a decision of national department, uh, national basic department of national education. Uh, and the essence of that was not to just uh, have kids coming to school and, and and get and get food, and in the process of that expose them to the to the pandemic, but was to say that uh, schools have a right and uh, they have an authority that they must put measures, convince the department that whilst we will be issuing food to learners, they are of no risk in terms of their own preparation. So uh, in the province there our schools that have, in fact, all our schools have been given that uh, authority that they must fit, and also even made a suggestion that if there is a learner that is close by a particular school but is studying in a school that is a bit far, that means a transport, that school, that kid can be uh, fed in the school that is in a walking distance to him or her, so that you don't really have a kid that is unable to get a, a, a feeding on the basis that there is a need of a transport before that kid can get food. So uh, schools in the province, they've been given that instruction. All right, we second both Kaila. We're going to leave the conversation there. Of course, the spokesperson for the MEC for Education was in the Eastern Cape province just telling us about the department's decision to delay the phasing in of some of the other schooling grades whilst the province works at reducing the infections in the province at large.